There's not been a huge amount of research into new oral medications for dystonia, which is, which is disappointing. And there are probably many reasons for this. One of which is the dystonias are quite diverse and quite often one drug wouldn't fix all different types of dystonia. So it means we're talking about smaller groups of patients. And the second is dystonia is a bit of a Cinderella speciality in that the numbers of patients in the different groups isn't always large enough to try to attract big pharmaceutical um, investment. However, there has been research, and a lot of that has been what we call repurposing, where you've got a drug which is being used for another condition, quite often um, other neurological conditions, and people can see that it may be valuable in dystonia. And certainly in the last five years, there have been probably up to 10 trials of different drugs which may have a better effect in dystonia. And a good example of this is a drug called zinisamide, which has turned out to be quite effective for the myoclonic jerks in myoclonus dystonia. Now, zinisamide is an anti-epileptic, and people know that it's safe in humans, so they just did a trial in the myoclonic dystonia patients, and it may be a benefit. There have been other repurposing trials, but some of these results have been more disappointing. But this is one way which researchers, rather than the drug industry, can actually try and find new ways of treating dystonia. Another area which is quite a, um, a growth area is, the, is cannabis and cannabinoids. Um, they've, they've been used recreationally, but increasingly in neurology, they realize that some cannabinoids can have a useful effect uh, for a number of neurological conditions, particularly for severe forms of epilepsy. The important thing to realize is in our brains, we all have natural cannabinoids. They're called endocannabinoids because they're within us, and we have cannabinoid receptors. So they, they serve a number of functions within the brain, and we don't understand all of those. And it's those receptors which, when you take cannabis itself, get stimulated and give people the um, psychological effects. But you can get cannabinoids which don't have the psychological effects, and some people think they may affect movement disorders. And there have been people who have felt that the dyskinesias they get in Parkinson's disease may be helped by cannabinoids. And for that reason, people think that some dystonias may also be helped by cannabinoids. There's not a huge amount of evidence, but there have been two trials of use of cannabinoids uh, for dystonia. They were both quite small trials. Uh, and so in that respect, they weren't particularly powered to find a good result. But unfortunately, both those trials were negative and didn't find a significant benefit for those treated with them. So at the moment, we don't have great evidence that cannabinoids work. We know anecdotally that some patients who take cannabis feel that it helps their dystonia. Now, that may be a direct effect on the dystonic movements, or it may be the fact that cannabis relaxes people. And we know that when people are relaxed, dystonia usually gets better. Um, and in, contra in contradiction, when they're stressed, their dystonia gets worse. So it may be actually an effect on their level of relaxation, but we just don't know. Certainly within the UK, uh, we're not licensed, neurologists are not licensed to prescribe cannabinoids for dystonia or any other movement disorders, but it is an area that needs more exploration and hopefully there will be more trials in the near future.